Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion node breakdown. Today's node is the duplicate node. So we're going to jump into Fusion and I've already got some stuff set up so we can move this along and we're going to add the duplicate node. And all this node really does is it duplicates stuff. So <laughs> hence the name. Now up here, you've got a, how many copies you want to make. So right now it's just set on two. And this node is time based. So it's not really going to automatically make your copies. So if I put in 10, nothing's going to happen. So even if I hit play, nothing's going to happen yet. To be able to start seeing your duplicates, you need to change this time offset in its by frame. But it's a little confusing. So if, say, I want it just to be time offset by one frame, nothing's going to happen at all. And if I do it by minus one frame, nothing's going to happen at all. So in order for any of this stuff to actually start working, we need to change where our duplicates show up. So we have our center, which changes our actual location of our duplicates. You've got your X axis and your Y axis. So you can change your center. And you can also change your pivot. And if you look in here, there's a little X and this changes your actual pivot of your duplicates. So if we change this, it'll change our pivot. So going back to the time, now if you see we have at negative one, it's gonna come in as we go up in frames. If we set it at one, it's gonna be there and go out at the end. So you can see it's a little confusing. So you have to work with your time to get your timing right. So, but we're just gonna move this to minus one. And we'll leave that on 10 and let's see what's going on. So like I said, you can change your center. So once you start uh, making changes, you're going to have to continuously move this around to get your duplicates exactly where you want them. Here you can change the size and this will change the actual size of the duplicates. And you can tell it goes from big to small if we go down in from small to big if we go up. So we're gonna bring that down. And your angle is your actual angle of the overall duplicates. So we can actually go to the beginning and keyframe this, go to the end, and we'll make that 365. But just mind you, when you're changing this, that doesn't mean it's gonna do one revolution. It's going to do multiple revolutions. So let me show you, even though we have it set to 365 it's turning multiple times. That just means your overall plate, which is surrounded by this green is changing 365 degrees. So, and once you start making more changes again, we can change this up to where your uh, duplicates are actually showing up. And down here you have your uh, typical apply modes. You have your typical operator modes and your subtractive and additive for those operators. Under the gain portion, we can change the color gains. So if we start bringing down that red, you can see we're removing red. If we bring down the greens, we're bringing down the greens. So we kind of have a nice color fade going on. And you can do the same with your blues and your alpha. Under the blur tab, we can add how much blur is happening over those duplicates. And you can see our last duplicate is getting blurred more. Up 
up to our last one. You can also add glows and if you need a little blur to go on. You can start glowing that out. And you've got your blend and your red scale, blue scale, green scale, and your alpha scale for the blur. And down here we also have burn in. Now, what this is doing is, let me get uh, some, some things going on top of each other. And if I change my burn in, you can see it's actually doing kind of a uh, color burn on top of the letters and on top of each other where they're crossing. That's what the burn in is. So if you need that to burn in, you can up it or get rid of it. And then this of course is your blend button to blend how much over time it's blending. Now down here under uh, duplicate path, I'm going to, that's why I kind of preset this up. I'm gonna bring uh, this one in so I can show you this. So under duplicate path, if I check this, you can actually draw in your path. And your path has all the standard uh, path operators up here. So if I need to select them all and curve them out, I can. So if we go under our duplicate, and let me get up here so we can see what we're doing. We up our copies and change our time offset. You can see we're getting copies not really quite along that path, <laughs> so, but it's following that path. So you can uh, change your location, change your pivot, and it will follow the path. And if we uh, change our size, we can get it to follow along the path. And let me get uh, 20. There we go, more. So down here, you've also got displacement, uh, scale and displacement offset. And this is where you can kind of do some kind of cool animation, I guess. Um, I never really played with it, but it looks like it could be pretty cool. So you can uh, animate your displacement scale and your displacement offset and get some uh, pretty cool effects. So let's reconnect our text here. Now this input, just so you know, will take anything. So whether it's a shape, a text, uh, other actual footage, you can input it into this duplicate. So we've got our duplicate going. And you can do, uh, we could always add, say, a trail. Trail node. And let's blur it up a little bit. And, and we will uh, use screen. And let's drop this uh, game down just a little bit. And we've got that effect. And you can always go back into your duplicate and change your pivot location if you want. You can animate your pivot location if you want. And let's restart. And there you go. That is the duplicate node. I will see you in the next node breakdown.